right, so I am on my refined paint layer. I am using a brush that's only about 55 pixels wide at an opacity of 61. And I am using my options to steal colors. I'm going to try plugging in my external mic. Hopefully you can hear me better now. All right. So continuing with the refined brush, but if you, if you use it at a low opacity, for too long and you blend everything, it can get muddy. So also remember, sometimes you want pure colors. So at this stage, there are a few things that are impacting what I'm looking at. And I wanna kind of acknowledge and optimize them. One is the, the color that I'm painting. It's being layered at 60% on top of a base color. That base color, I have dimmed to 74%. Notice how different it is when you play with the opacity of your base color. And this is something I definitely recommend you do. I like to dim it a little bit, so that's just my refined paint. Because if it's at 100%, it becomes a little overpowering. So by dimming it to about 70, what is that doing? Well, that's allowing the, the gray behind to mix with that color, the middle gray, the 50% gray. I like the gray better than mixing white with it because white washes it all out. So how can I play with what mixes with my color, but I, I want it to still be bold and not just grayed out? What I can do is I can take my base layer I'll turn off the references for the time being. And I can use the magic wand and select the empty space around them, you know, even if it's a locked layer. Then I can take that selection and move it to my gray fill layer, even if it's a locked layer, and then say select inverse. So it selects the opposite of the empty space, right? And then I can hit Command J to duplicate. And what that does is even if I have a white background, it keeps the gray shape behind. And then if I unlock that shape, it also allows me to play with the adjustments, the hue saturation of that gray background shape that's mixing with my colors. So this is like glazing a painting, but it's doing it from the, from the underside instead of from the top. So I can colorize that gray and I can ch choose like an overall color temperature I want to mix with the painting, whether it's warm, whether it's cool, or whether it's neutral, like a middle gray. And that can be helpful at this stage as I'm still choosing colors and refining my painting. So let's see, that's neutral. Well, that's not neutral. This would be neutral. So I'm just gonna push it and warm it up a little bit. Oh, but I really like those strong blues. So let me just Yeah, I'll just deepen it a little. So that versus 
that. And that's just changing the hue underneath. And then whether it's on gray or on white, you have a little bit more control of your paint. Also, you can see the little areas where I didn't do a solid fill on my, um, on my rough paint layer. And now I might decide, okay, I want the gray, but I don't want it at full 50% anymore. Maybe I want it like this. Or sometimes I'll, I'll even do a paint a gradation behind so I get a sense of what the light source is. And that helps me make some choices. Okay. So instead of going in with like really fine detail on more of the face, I'm going to move my reference a little bit. I need to unlock it. Just move it off to the corner here and try to, to finish off or at least refine paint in the same way more of the hair and her neck and maybe get into her jewelry a little bit. It's all about kind of setting it up for what you want to do, saving your work as you go. The only paint I, layer I want unlocked is the one I want to affect. Right? And if you want to make that layer stronger, you can always try duplicating it because it was at a, I'm painting at a lower opacity, duplicating it basically increases the opacity. So sometimes that can be a good idea because it's not that your layer is at a low opacity, it's that your brush is at a low opacity while you were painting it. So understanding all these things will make you a better digital painter, knowing what features to, to work with. You also give yourself as much room as possible, even on a browser-based program. Okay. So I'm still gonna keep my brush pretty big. I don't wanna lose these kind of darkest darks, so I wanna reestablish those in some places. And to do that, maybe I want to use a higher opacity brush that's bigger. So I've kind of split my refined paint into a duplicate layer where I'm now painting some heavy shadows. And when you're trying to make a representational painting or even an abstraction like this that represents in a stylized way, that just requires a lot of observing of the light, of the values, bringing, overstating the highlights, bringing them back, putting shading back in the kind of thing you, you practice over and over again in a drawing or a painting class when you're looking at still lifes. And the way you deal with your light and shadow for your work is gonna be very distinctive to your artistic style. So sometimes I might use really bold colors, but I'm gonna use a color that's pretty dark like a red or a blue or a green. But I'm also squinting a lot and squinting helps to helps me to see even when using bold color what the um, the gray
So if you're missing a color that you can't feel from yourself, you can always go select it and put it into the foreground and then put it somewhere in your, in your painting. And then a lot of digital painters just paint a little swatch of that. Professor, color. we lost your audio again. Huh. I wonder what's going on with my mics. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, so all I'm saying is if you're feeling limited in the colors that you're able to select, you can always kind of paint a swatch of selected colors off to the side. Or maybe your favorite colors if you're worried about them getting muddy. And then you can always steal from those colors as you paint. And in those, you should always have a darkest dark. That's not solid black, right? Most painting classes will teach you, you don't just use black paint for your blacks, you mix your black. And not solid white for your brightest white. You know, you want there to be a little bit of pixel content there. And I'm getting that through the, the color settings on the brush. All right. At this point, too, some digital painters find it's really helpful to use what's called the Navigator window. So if you go to Window and you click on Navigator, it will show you your full image. So even though I'm working up close, it will show me what it's looking like from a distance. And sometimes that can be really helpful if it doesn't get in your way. And it's also a way you can kind of move and pan around your image without having to use a trackpad or, or hold the space bar down for the hand tool. Um, in traditional painting, a lot of the times painters will have a little mirror uh, next to their canvas so they, they, they can look at their painting in the mirror. This does two things. I think the most important thing it does is it helps them see it from a, a greater distance without having to physically stand up and walk back. But the other thing it does is, is it flips it. And especially when you're doing something that's really representational, you're trying to match a photo, for instance, it can be helpful to, to flip it horizontally and check it. I'm not going to do that because I'm working on multiple layers. I put, I have to put it in a group and all of that. Um, but those are, are tips you can try. Thank you.